Before we leaving, Tora want to explain something to Rex Rex and Poppy. Explain what, Master Pawn? It about this advanced gaming device. I did wonder what this thing was for, so it's for playing games. Yes, game is called Tiger Tiger. Is hidden gem that Grampy Pawn make for Tora when Tora was Little Pawn. It looks like it's seen better days. Tora turned power on just now, so it should be possible to play. Rex Rex give game a try. Hmm. It does sound kind of fun, but I wouldn't want to get hooked on a game while Nia needs rescuing. Wait, wait, wait! Playing this game can earn prizes! Special parts for Power Up Poppy! Parts for Poppy? Grampy Pawn make this game in hopes that it reveal true purpose when Poppy finally complete. So if friends think Poppy a bit weak, or just want more amazing power, play game and get new upgrade! I guess that makes sense. I'll give it a go then. That is wise decision! Shall Tora explain basics? After all, Rex Rex is a little bit wet behind ears. Use directional buttons to move. Use A button to attack. So, that is basics. Tora let Rex Rex figure out rest by Rex's self. Learning is best by doing. Meh. Tiger Tiger, go! <laughs> I like the reference to arcade machines and then the copyright model it's soft. So, if it has the ability to just spit out prizes, why not unscrew the screws on the side and just take all the prizes out of it and have the strongest plate of them all? I, I don't know. Anyway, enough lampshading. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy, and welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time, we helped complete Tora's greatest invention, at least I hope so. I can't imagine a boy his age has accomplished too much more greater than this in his lifetime. This time is dedicated to learning almost every single thing there is to know about blades as a concept. Some of the information in this video is brand new, so I hope it teaches even veterans some new things. We're gonna be starting with the freshest addition to the team, Poppy, and everything that makes her different because, oh, she different. Starting off here on the title screen, Tiger Tiger has a normal mode and an easy mode. I'm gonna be playing the easy mode for sake of demonstration here because it has no difference whatsoever other than the fact that walls don't hurt Tora in the game. You also can't be crushed to death and will just pass through whenever that would happen. There is no difference in rewards or score in easy mode. You might as well just play it unless you want more challenge. I remember not playing this at all because I assumed the items were worse, but you have nothing to worry about in that department, or any department for that matter. We attack using the anchor shot, the jellies can only be hurt from the top, and the turtles can only be hurt from the bottom. The wrench that I picked up uh, enabled me to attack diagonally. When I got hit by an enemy, I lost that as well as some of the air. This is essentially what salvaging looks like from a uh, different perspective, whereas normally we don't get to see Rex going down and actually doing the salvaging. Here we can, even though it's Tora. If I were to not have that wrench icon, I would drop a treasure chest upon taking damage, and those contain the items necessary to upgrade pop. Uh, that was some help, and I could've used that. There are bonuses for doing things perfectly, and that's what I'm hoping for, of course. When you reach the bottom, you get as much time as you need to deal with these things. This is a two-hit enemy. You there can go. And let's see how we do. On the way back up, we're unable to attack. I personally lo like locking myself to the Y axis and just moving side to side only, only going up and down if I absolutely have to can be a little hard to maneuver yourself around stuff, so I like being near the top of the screen to give myself a little leeway to play around with. And there it is! For a first attempt, that's not so bad. Our rewards are... A whole bunch of ether crystals, 202. We got every single ether crystal in the level, getting some more bonus. And for our treasure, oh, 300 more ether crystals and some parts, which happen to be... Uh, that's my name. We got four of one thing that give Arts Aggro Boost, Special Level 1+, plus, Movement Heal, and Affinity Max Barrier, and then we have a different icon that gives Insect Slayer as an effect. Let's get into what these effects are and how we can use them. None of those are particularly what I'm looking for, though. Skills of Rex Rex quite impressive. Rex not pro salvager for nothing. You think so? I think your experience is salvage. I think your experience... Experience. I think your experience is. Oh, I understand. I, I didn't. Under, I thought the grammar was wrong. Salvaging came in real. Came in useful. Not that I don't appreciate the compliments, but we should hurry and rescue Nia. So how are we gonna get onto the Titan battleship where Nia's being held? As luck would have it, the Cloud Sea looks to be ebbing just now. We had best aim for the route Pyra mentioned. The route was stretchy, stretching just past Garagorm's arch. 
From here, it easiest to go up to, to top of stairs, cross bridge, and then pass under gate. Then you're at Garagorm's Arch. Will the Ardanian guards not spot us? Area around Ardanian base heavily guarded, but up to Garagorm's Arch should be no problem. All right, let's head there for now. Poppy will do best to help. Yeah, rescuing Nia is all fine and good, but we have game mechanics to learn about. Behold, Poppy, the world's first artificial blade! Here's the tutorial man coming to steal my thunder and explain it worse than me. So it's a double slap in the face. Poppy can't equip ox cores, but she has something just as good for customizing her abilities, Poppy Swap. You can access Poppy Swap by just going to main menu, characters, blade setup, Poppy Alpha, and Poppy Swap. To make use of the Poppy Swap feature, you'll need to get a hold of certain items via the Tiger Tiger game. Play Tiger Tiger as much as you can to make Poppy into her best self. I think you've gathered that Poppy herself is a god incarnate, but she's only good relative to how much you sell your soul to that game. We're gonna start off by going into Tora here. He's got a pretty large amount of HP. That's not being helped by any accessory, whereas Rex does. Tora comes wearing a Nopon mask. How fitting, because it's what I was gonna buy for him anyway. He generates more and more aggro every second. That's pretty good, because Tora is an HP sponge, and not just in appearance. He has high strength and high HP, gets high defenses courtesy of Poppy, you understand. If we go into his affinity chart, we can get, let's see, this one is, uh, that one's just some stat ups, I don't think that one's really that good. Some arts at the start of a battle could be kinda nice, his arts actually charge up quite slow. These are just stat ups in return for that though. Dexterity up, HP restored to self, and party gauge at the end of a chain attack, we don't have that right now. HP, uh, oh, okay, that's probably gonna be a bit pretty big priority. That's kind of nice, makes him unable to die once, given that he's our tank, that's pretty good. I think I want the HP and the using an art at the beginning of a fight. Since I have to get both of those eventually for the things that I want. Piece of cake, time for a break. I'll go for this one first, because it just sounds much nicer. Tora only has the one blade, he cannot use core crystals. So very limited in that way. His arts. Comes with a little bit of WP. Steady drill increases damage to launched enemies by 100%. We're not able to launch enemies. Big boost is a topple art, so finally we can topple enemies again, just as soon as our break art leaves the party. whoop de doo But this is still a good art and probably gonna be the one that I want. Spinning Cutter is a circle attack around the user and has increased aggro draw, making up for the fact that Tora isn't gonna hit as hard as the Aegis. He needs effects like this to get aggro. That together with his Nop on Mask, he should be able to do quite a bit. And then Rigid's Shield is different from any other art we've seen so far. It says type defensive. Toro will just sit still, not attacking, guarding against every attack that comes his way while self-healing. It's a good art, actually pretty optimal. I'm just not using it for now because I'm more concerned of them smacking enemies around since we need him to hold on to aggro and Poppy's kinda weak right now. Poppy needs a core chip. Some things never change even if you are artificial. I haven't made this comparison yet, but because the blades are the weapons themselves, I compare core chips to being like buying a new weapon in other RPGs. In fact, you can see that on some weapons, they even get entirely new appearances. I could go for a little bit of auto attack, or I could go for more auto attack than that and a critical rate, or I could go for even more auto attack than that and the same critical rate. I think it's pretty clear which one. We'll buy one and equip it right away. That does lower the block rate, but again, I'm more concerned with damage so that Tora can grab aggro and keep aggro. I think I'll give Tora a muscle belt for right now. That's everything dealing with Tora and equipment, so let's get into what makes Poppy unique. Poppy has a level one, level two, and level three special, all determined by effects in Poppy Swap. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. Her three battle skills boosts her defense and ether defense by 5%, making her quite tanky. Guard Shift raises her block rate by 10%, but this adds 10% and doesn't multiply. Thanks to this, Poppy has the highest natural block rate in the entire game, taking half damage whenever it goes off. And Emergency Mode further increases her block rate when Tora's low on health, a nice desperation effect. She's also got some field skills as well, of course. Nop on Wisdom is already helpful. So what exactly is this Poppy swap that decides so many things? Poppy is a fully customizable blade with your imagination and sanity for that damn game being the only limit. If we go down here, 
With a thousand ether crystals for the level one special, we can unlock that. If we do that, we're able to equip an effect such as that insect slayer that had the same icon on it and decide what bonus effects her specials will have. The attack itself and number of hits and everything is the same, but we get to choose the effect. It's 1500 to unlock her level two specials effect and 2000 to unlock her level three specials effect. Now, her level three special slot is worth a lot in particular because the level four special copies the effect from level three. Again, how do I know this? Data mine. Starting at the top is Poppy's roll CPU. She can be all sorts of different roles, and this just determines the stat bonuses that she grants to her driver. Arts cards. This is Poppy's equivalent of blade arts, those randomly occurring effects that blades can randomly send to their driver. This one makes it so that he nullifies one reaction. Why would Tora, what's Tora doing? This makes it so that if Tora were to get inflicted with break, he would just ignore it one time. Pretty useful, actually. You don't want your tank getting hit with break and then topple and who knows what else. Pretty good effect. Here she can get some skill upgrades, essentially having two additional skill slots. Five battle skills in total. We need 6,000 either crystals for one, 10,000 for the other, so this ain't happening anytime soon, but that is pretty promising. She does have the skill ram up here, which is not a battle skill, but the same thing as an ox core slot. These are ox cores that other blades can get, but these are poppy specific versions. Art's aggro boost has a cost of 75. What does that refer to? Well, off on the right, her ether furnace can only hold so much power at one time. If we wanted to equip that, we would need 75 free points in there, and we currently only have 35. You do that by going to the energy converter and spending ether crystals to raise her maximum capacity. 100 is pretty lenient, so I think I'm going to do that right now. And then lastly, her elemental core. Yep, you can even choose what element Poppy is, within certain limitations. She can't truly be any element. But hey. Nobody's perfect. Oh, who am I kidding? Of course she is. Create slash crystallize parts. We can go in here and spend our ether crystals on parts without having to win them from Tiger Tiger. Ether crystals can be a nice, nice thing to have for this reason. Before I get too deep into using ether crystals, I want to go off to the expansion pass menu for the first time as there's something that we need to see there first. And to say that this Let's Play is going to go over every aspect of the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 expansion pass. I'll be giving my full opinions on this at a later time and telling you everything that it contains so that you can come to a decision as to whether or not you want to spring for it. But for Poppy Swap, all that's important to know is that various item rewards are given upon purchasing it. For buying the expansion pass, you get all these different things. 50,000 gold from Banna. I mean, it's not the 100,000 that he owes me for completing the job, but it's still pretty good. I'm not gonna be grabbing every single item out of here right away. In fact, if you want, there are core crystals in here for you right now to awaken some blades. I just don't really think I wanna resort to that quite yet. I probably will little by little, just as I want more. But the main reason that I came in here is upgrade parts for Poppy. 30,000 ether crystals available right from the start. If we keep going down, there's upgrade parts for Poppy 2 battle. I'll take 30,000 more. These are packets that get sent to you upon purchasing the expansion pass and can be redeemed one time per save file. No danger of losing this stuff by starting over. About this menu, by the way! Don't go poking around in it willy-nilly. A lot of these menus are meant to be accessed after you've beaten the game, and as such, they contain some really bad spoilers. I'm being serious. You will regret it. This sounds like a horrible design choice, but you kind of owe it to your players who just spent a bunch of money on new side quests to tell them up front what they have to do in order to view these new side quests. This was also several months after the game's release that they did this, so I'm pretty neutral on this. I think it's a good idea, but there are some spoilers in these folders. Don't open them unnecessarily. Now that there's no limits to our pockets, let's go over these things. We can buy level two mods. The ether mod would make Tora more of a healer, I guess. It doesn't change the effect of the art, just the stats that he gains from Poppy. So really, even though it says the role is healer, this more so just makes it so that if he has any arts or specials with Poppy that use the ether stat, that'll do more damage. Not really into that. Luck would enable him to topple an enemy more if they resist it, but not a lot of enemies resist topple. It's mainly break that's resisted because if you can get break on them, then you can do everything. Tank Mod 2 is purchasable. I'm just gonna hold off in case I get it randomly from Tiger Tiger. Higher numbered CPUs are factually better, more of the same stats. Some items such as the elemental cores cannot be purchased. These become available when we find items called technical manuals in our travels. 
You won't find these in stage one of Tiger Tiger either, and Earth is the ideal element anyway. Arts cards. What sort of effects could we grab? It doesn't look like a whole lot's really available to us. Yeah, in fact, all we have right is pretty much is this and accuracy up. Cancels debuffs from enemies could be nice for a tank. Special enhancing ramp. In order to make any use of this at all, we not only need parts, but also to open up the slots to actually stick them in. I guess it's what you call a ramification. Her specials are pretty unremarkable, so to make them better, we equip secondary effects to them and decide what they do. You might want to know what these specials actually do when making these decisions, so I'm here for you. Her level 1 special is a physical attack 4 hits in a circle around Tora. Her level 2 special is a 6 hit ether attack with a fan shape in front and a chance to inflict knockback. This is like a shorter blow down where it just immobilizes the enemy for a second while they get shoved backwards. Level 3 special is a physical giant 1 hit attack. No other effects than that, other than whatever is equipped. And her level 4 special, which takes its effect from her level 3, is a physical mega 1 hit attack that has a 20% critical chance increase and it does increased damage to toppled enemies. On to the effects that her specials can get, Aerial Slayer is just more damage to aerial enemies, Affinity Boost is a big deal, giving more affinity to Tora every time she uses that special. Aquatic Slayer does more damage to aquatic enemies, Back Force is increased damage on the back, he's a tank, he's gonna have aggro, the enemy's gonna be facing him, why would I do that? Beast Slayer is beast type enemies, Flank Force is damage from the side, again, what's the point? Frontal Force might be kinda cool, Humanoid Slayer, Insect Slayer, and that is all. Skill Ram. Starting off with these, we have Aerial Hunter, which does more damage to aerial enemies across all of her moves. Affinity Max Barrier grants a damage barrier to the entire party once per battle when Tora and Poppy hit max affinity. Aggro Boost. Again, I prefer doing more damage. Aquatic Hunter. There, not just tied to a special. Arts Aggro Boost. Increasing the aggro that she gets from arts and specials. Arts Stealth, making her arts generate less aggro and Auto attack stealth, ew. Your auto attacks don't generate hardly any aggro. They're very inconsequential damage wise. Not good. The Toxic Avenger increases damage when an ally is incapacitated. A tank might get some chances to use that. A passive back attack, a passive beast hunter, blowdown resist. We've already seen that happen to us a few times. Challenger, higher leveled enemies take more damage from Poppy. That's a good effect in situational cases. Critical Restore. Critical healing is a very popular strategy in this game. Poppy is not someone that I recommend it on because her critical rate is pitiful. She's only doing it about 9% of the time, but it does certainly make her less likely to die. Earth Defense Up is an elemental resistance. Electric Defense as well. Emergency Guard increases her block rate when her HP is low. Encourage increases affinity when a, driver miss when a fellow driver misses an attack. Fire Defense Up. Flash. Let's you start each battle with some aggro already accumulated. Tora's accessory already does this, so that's pretty redundant. Humanoid Hunter. She does have Hunter's Chemistry, and that's a good effect. If I don't get this from playing Tiger Tiger, I'm automatically gonna say yes to buying this. Ice Defense up. Indoor Attack up. This is a universal damage increase as long as she is indoors. I might say yes to that as well. It's a great effect. Insect Hunter, we know what that does. Knockback resist, pretty self-explanatory. Life Drain, uh, restores HP each time an enemy is defeated. Situationally useful. Restores HP when moving, not a fan. I He's gonna be staying still most of the time. Increases accuracy at nighttime. That's a good, accu that's a good accuracy boost, actually. The Opening Art doing more damage. Mm, I guess if you want to one-shot weak enemies that you're just barely not one-shotting, if you just need to knock them out for an item or something. Outdoor attack up. This is a more useful version than the situational indoor attack up. If you've noticed how often we've been outdoors fighting, it's a lot more frequent. Piercing lunge. Has a higher chance of dealing a guard annulling attack. So 70% of the time, if the enemy was to guard you, it would just get ignored. Shackle blade resist. Shackle blade is a status that no enemy has inflicted on us, but it makes it so that a blade cannot be switched out and can't do anything to help its driver. Shoulder to shoulder is the opposite of Hunter's Chemistry. Use Hunter's Chemistry. You don't want to be caught off guard from an enemy in a serious fight. You're, if you get caught off guard by an enemy, you're just going to run away most of the time. Silent Strike. Surprise attacks. This is attacking when an enemy hasn't noticed you yet, what I thought Hunter's Chemistry was for. 
Specials level 1+, plus, specials level 2+, plus, specials level 3+. Plus. It's a 20 damage increase or a 30 on each of these. No special level 4+, plus though. Spike defense. Spikes are when enemies counterattack. This is not a particularly dangerous source of damage and thus isn't useful often. Sunlight Eye is the opposite of uh, Night Vision. Exact same effect, accuracy during the day. Swift Strike increases damage dealt by 70% in the first 30 seconds after the start of a battle. Good against regular enemies. Telepathy makes it so that Blade Arts, those randomly occurring buffs that blades can send to their drivers, will activate more frequently. Water Defense up, Wind Defense up. That is all. So many effects here, so many yet to be unlocked, a lot of choices to choose from. But let's just say you can't afford the part you want and you can't afford $29.99 for the expansion pass. What are you to do then? I played through the entire game without knowing this my first time. That little tiny banner at the bottom of the screen, you know how it says, why crystallize? Why not crystallize is more like it. Apparently, crystallize means sell things you don't need. This makes it so much more reasonable and less grindy to raise Poppy up and make her the way you want. I'm never gonna use this movement heal. I might as well just junk it. It's so much better this way. And I wish they were more upfront with telling you that you could sell the things that you get from Tiger Tiger, because I didn't know. I just sat there grinding forever and ever. Speaking of grinding forever and ever, guess what I'm gonna go do? Okay, that's not entirely accurate. I have a lot of ether crystals. I just wanna try to see if maybe I can get a few for free. I don't wanna over rely on my 60,000 ether crystals because it's gotta last me the whole game. And if I spend it all right now, then I think that's just kind of wasteful. There are other uses for ether crystals later on. I want you to know that so you don't just go willy nilly spending all of yours. Second time, I got all the ether crystals once again. And we open up these eight chests. Ooh, a lot of parts. No new high score this time. An insect slaying special, a frontal force special. That's kind of good. Movement hill, beast hunter, silence strike. Not into most of those. And then an affinity boost on her specials. It wouldn't be a Xenoblade or a random little offshoot inside of a Xenoblade without secret areas to discover. It's very true to the spirit. In the case of stage one, it's between these two little blocks where you can meet presumably the game developer himself and get all these bonuses. These can be nice, but the level design in Tiger Tiger is semi-random where some chunks are the same each time and other chunks are randomized in certain areas. The order might get switched up on you as well, so sometimes the secret area just will not appear. I've told you to play on easy, and I stand by that advice. Now, in the pre-release version that I played and at launch, there was no easy mode and there was no expansion pass available for purchase. You actually had to play this whole thing balls to the wall, grinding at it for hours. Those of you playing for the first time right now, you're privileged. For you, it's just a fun little side mode that you can go play whenever you want. For all of us who played at launch, we were this game's captive and never had a chance to appreciate how fun it was. It was forced on us. Thankfully, they eased up on this. I would advise winding down with Tiger Tiger at nighttime, or maybe making it your mobile game of choice, since the main adventure runs like ass in handheld mode anyway. I know I prefer to see the new stuff on a TV, so I just played Tiger Tiger when I was on the go and made my next trip to the TV that much sweeter. On my fourth attempt, that's no damage. Every ether crystal. All nine treasure chests. And I do believe that equates to a perfect bonus. 1,500, almost 1,600 ether crystals and 59,977 points. Suck it, tiger. Ouch. Now I'm putting my fake internet name on that. I don't know about you guys. Movement heal, aggro boost, indoor attack up three. That's better than the one we can buy. Oh yeah, come here, Poppy. Let me hug you and shove things into you. Never mind that. What's far more interesting is the fact that I was about to go into how enemies just give you points and there's no bonus from killing every enemy. 
What I didn't know is that there is a massive point bonus that puts even the perfect bonus to shame if you go full-on pacifist and kill no enemies. I'll unlock Poppy's level one special, and we need more energy already to do things with it. So much for uh, using our rightful purchase. You can take Frontal Force one there. And then for her level two, gotta rank this up again and how it be. I do believe that is a second perfect bonus in a row. 68,810. Just call me cac o -phony. I chose to open up her level three specials effect just because that's a pretty inconsequential amount of ether crystals. I've purchased every slot that I wanted, so now let's start actually slotting the parts into place. Tank Mod 2 is factually better than Tank Mod 1 in any way, and we can just buy it, so why not go for it? Gave the level 1 special increased damage from the front by 80%. We're going to be using the special a lot. Uh, increased affinity by 60 uh, when using the level 2 special, and damage from the front 60% when using the level 3 special. I went with a weaker effect on the level 3 special because I won't be using it as much. System Reset is an insanely good arts card, so we're gonna take that, and have you noticed this is the first time I'm ever dipping below 60,000 Aether Crystals, and only by a tiny bit? If you're able to get down that route in level one, it's not that hard to put together a nice build on her. Raise this up again. Raise it up again. Okay, now we're running a little bit. Wait, what? Oh, I'm an idiot. You can't have the same effect on twice. That was the problem. Not that I needed more of that. Okay, so I guess I didn't need to buy that much more of it. Really should have looked at that big number 20. And I think for the other one, I was going to go with a debuff resist, but Tora has very bad accuracy like we've gone over, so I'm going to go with accuracy up. Pretty cheap effect. Here's everything that I decided to go with if you want to pause and compare it to your own. I'm a big fan of this setup. I think we got some pretty nice stuff. It's not necessary to open up every slot right now. Just open up stuff as it's needed as Poppy starts feeling like she's falling off. Heck, I didn't even need to expand her ether furnace that much. With one more Tiger Tiger, I wouldn't have even needed the DLC. Oh, the heck with it. I feel like playing it one more time. It's almost like when a game isn't force-fed to you, it's fun. The only other thing worth knowing about Tiger Tiger is this icon, it's invincibility. I wasn't able to get it to show up at any point, it's pretty rare. You understand. Yet another high score! Broke the 70,000 barrier! Look at that, 60,000 ether crystals. I didn't need no stinking pay to win strats, I just wanted to show you that it was there. We're all done making my ideal poppy, so let's move on to some other things. Tora? Woo! Super tasty treat for Tora! Tora likes drinks. Poppy likes staple foods. You will break. Even Poppy can smell such delicious scent. In the Argentum Trade Guild, the fizz juice... Yum yum! Resistance protocols deactivated. Is Poppy's favorite item. Even she's got her own tastes. On the upper level at the Rumble Tum Canteen, there's the juicy salmon. If Tora buried in these, he could die happy. Tora's Even favorite Poppy item. And now for the Coupe de Gracie. We're gonna buy three roly poly keep on rolling maracas. It just so happens that this thing. <laughs> Research is progressing. Poppy's favorite. Poppy feels excited. Tora's favorite item type. Poppy's favorite item type and Poppy's favorite item, and it lasts for two hours. This recharges specials by 0.3 of its charge every second. You bet I want that. It is true that even with all these multipliers, they are still inferior to the Whisper Quarter, the most expensive item in this store. But I have my reasons for going with the roly-poly maracas, even if it's not immediately obvious. We'll be seeing that later. Wait, 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 wait. is that the same grandma walking by? Oh my god! When my twin sister was a whole six inches shorter than me and about half of the weight, oh, oh, oh we went to market together. Oh. This is so amusing. Man, she has such a shorter stride from her legs that she's falling behind. <laughs> That's really funny. So that is every single thing you could ever want to know about Tora and Poppy, except for some actual fighting with them. Poppy sure hogged a lot of the spotlight, now didn't she? 
Let's move on to the mechanics related to all the other blades so that we can knock it all out in one shot. It has come time at long last to find out who our first rare blade is gonna be. This is an exciting moment every playthrough. No one knows what it is. This ability to skip the awakening and go straight to the screen where you see what you got, also not in the game at launch. I had to sit through this 30 second cutscene every single time and you know what? So that I can have some fun reactions for you guys, I do it again too! <laughs> I just think it'd be more fun that way if I could react to seeing the blade in the cutscene instead of just a menu sprite. Oh, we got a common. A katana though, that's a weapon class that we haven't seen so far. I don't wanna get too happy with explaining things, so I'm only gonna explain weapon classes as we get to use them in battle. You appear to be a water element. Introducing me! <laughs> Now that we can awaken core crystals just like a real driver, we should learn exactly how this works. So this is entirely random and luck based and you don't get any say in if you get a good party member, right? Not exactly. A lot of people would think that right away and turn up their nose at the fact that there's a gotcha system in this game at all. It also gets kind of a bad rap because it's what a lot of microtransaction games do, but you can put your wallet away, no microtransactions here, this is just using in-game items and nothing else. There's several game mechanics that determine what you get that are predictable. And there's fail safes in place so that if you just have legendarily bad luck, you will always get at least something good as long as you keep at it. This is not locking your ability to beat the game behind luck. It's just making it so that every playthrough is different. To determine how rare and how common blades are, we have to start with the pity system. Every consecutive core crystal without a rare blade accumulates pity points to prevent unusually bad luck from screwing the player out of being able to play the game well. Common core crystals that don't contain rare blades add five pity points to the score. Rare core crystals add 25 and legendary core crystals add 50. These numbers reset after any rare blade is obtained. Pity blade number one is awarded at 100 consecutive pity points. Pity Blade 2 at 100 more points, and Pity Blade 3 at another 100. With the expansion pack installed, one could guarantee rare blades by just popping two legendary core crystals they start the game with from the expansion menu. Who are these Pity Blades? Upon creating your save file, you are assigned one of five different seeds that determines the Pity Blades and the rarity of all the other blades. This is why you had a very easy time finding stuff that your friends can't find, and you're able to talk about your findings when you pull core crystals. By counting out the points and paying attention to which blade was awarded after 100 points, one can determine which seed they have. Except, group one was put into the pool twice, taking up the slot that was meant for group five. So group one has a 40% chance, and no player has ever gotten group five. Being taken pity on is all fine and good, but what about the other rare blades that don't fit into any pity group? There are several factors that determines when these are pulled. First is base probability. Every randomly obtained blade has a percentage of being pulled. Based on your seed, the most frequently occurring rare blades have a 2.44% chance of being pulled, while the rarest is a one in a thousand shot. Sounds terrible. Well, the less rare blades that the player has, the easier it is to get one because there's more blades being rolled for. If there's say 30 rare blades that have yet to be obtained, that's quite a significant chunk of the pie if some of them are as high as two and a half percent. With each passing rare blade, that's another sliver of the pie that has been replaced by common blades. Second is the core crystal type used. Common core crystals have a one times chance of pulling a rare blade. Rare core crystals are one and a half times and legendaries have a three times chance. Third is the idea stat, definitely the least straightforward and my least favorite. Depending on your idea stat, you have a higher chance of pulling blades of a specific two elements. For instance, bravery has a higher chance of pulling fire and water blades. Only the highest idea stat matters, and ties are broken randomly each time a core crystal is pulled. In this example picture, Rex has heightened chances of pulling a fire, water, wind, or ice blade. There are items known as boosters that raise idea levels temporarily for one blade pull, and using just one booster will pretend as though that stat is now the highest even if it isn't. Idea levels cap at level 15, and the highest possible multiplier to get a rare blade with this is 1.75 times. 
This stacks multiplicatively with the core crystal chance. Fourth is the luck stat. Always equip the driver with as much luck as possible before opening a great big booster box. The highest luck a driver can have is 999, which multiplies the chances of pulling a rare blade by 1.36. When using the optimal setup, that's a legendary core crystal, multiplied by a driver with a level 15 idea stat in the desired element, multiplied by 999 luck, the base probability of pulling a rare blade is multiplied by 7.14 times. This means that 1 in a thousand chance becomes a 0.715% chance, and the most common rare blade is a 17.4216% chance. A tidy improvement for anybody. Don't worry about obtaining every single rare blade by a given point. Some will just not show up until certain story progress quietly happens under your nose. Don't worry, I'll tell you exactly when those moments arise. As a side note, cause let's face it, that's what common blades are. Common blades are given completely random names, body types, genders, weapon types, elements, and even randomized skills. My Jonathan might not resemble your Jonathan in any way. That sounds worse than it did in my head. They also have no defined favorite items, instead having that randomized too. I can't possibly give you a guide on how to raise your common blades, so I won't. Just pay attention to their charts and you'll know what to do. Common blades can potentially have very good battle skills. The chances of this happening goes up as a driver's level increases. The only other thing to know about common blades is that common blades of the light element do not exist. Only rare blades can have that. I got a bunch of common blades, didn't get a single rare, and ideally, I'd like to make that happen. It's come time. In the expansion pass menu, out of all these free items, we have newbies drive, Newbie Driver's Core Crystal set. We can get Core Crystals by going out, killing enemies, opening treasure troves, all sorts of things. You're not, you don't need to do this, but just for sake of getting them a little sooner, I think I'm gonna open this up right now. Remember that treasure chest from a long, long time ago and how we didn't have Nopon Wisdom to open it? Oh, we have all the Nopon Wisdom in the world now. I mean, he built an artificial blade. That's an awful lot of Nopon Wisdom. There it is. Gimme, 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 gimme. Yes, we got two common core crystals as well as, oh, was that a chip or was that just more money and I mistook it for a chip again? Coil chip. That pretty good. That hurts Pyra's critical hit rate by a lot when she has such good critical damage, but that's like, that's over double what her auto attack is. I could give it to Poppy and just give her an insane block rate. Ooh, this one's gonna require a lot of thought. Well, I think I'll decide who's getting this at a later time. This'll be affected by whoever we pull from our core crystals. I've always got your back. Hayabusa and it's a dog, dude, you're from Okami. Are you Dark Elf? No, you're Lightning Elf. Oh, okay, you're a healer. Twin Rings on Rex is actually quite good. Oh, and just so it's clear, auto-saving happens whenever you awaken Core Crystal, so no trying to metagame that, unless you want to restore through Cloud Saves. I'm getting worried. I only have one common Core Crystal left. The Awakening? Have mercy on my poor souls. They hurt from walking around all day. No. No, I didn't. So about that. Yeah, I'll take one of these. Eventually I will get something. Eventually. Rare core crystal, let's try it. Oh boy, and it's that weapon class. That looked promising. <gasps> oh! Azami. I am a captive. Keep me by your side. <laughs> Not who I expected to see. I've never gotten this one in the early game before. She's usually one of the later blades I recruit. 
Okay, a zombie. I think she's kind of creepy, but also kind of cool at the same time. Together at last. <laughs> we won't be doing any actual fighting today, and I don't want to go into a zombie quite yet, but... I've seen some people say that it really sucks, that it's luck-based, how good the characters you get are, and... I'm here to tell you that a lot of the lower tier blades are what fill up these gotcha ones. There are good ones that are random, but I would say that they're more the exception than the rule, and only two or three really good characters are randomly obtained. I mean, come on, Pyra's the Aegis. She's gonna be stronger than someone we literally found on the ground. Generally speaking, the story important characters are going to be stronger than these random ones, and you can beat the game using anything you want. Due to the random nature, I can't guide your specific team through a fight, but just know we will be getting every single rare blade eventually. So that's everything you need to know about blades, artificial or not. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2, we're gonna put these blades to the test and see how they do in some actual fighting, cause what are some blades without some fighting? See you guys then. Ha, <laughs> his name is You Lose. <laughs>